Hi, my name is Patrick. I'm with Falcon Sales. This is a Jackson Journey light touring kayak rigged with one of our one square meter compact kayak sails. We're going to show you how to rig one of these on your kayak so you can have one too. You can see here we're going to be installing a rigging kit so that this one square meter falcon sail will be on this kayak. See, this is in fluorescent yellow. It's one square meter. It's a really nice, solid, uh, crisp sail. It also, the kit also comes with a uh, three-piece mass kit and the universal joint that allows you to lower the sail. And it's carbon fiber. You can piece it together. It's very easy. Here is the boom with the that attaches to the mast. Here is the deck plate with a deck adapter block that's included with every Falcon sail rig. Uh, we will review your boat and make sure you get the parts you need. Uh, and here is a deck support strut, the deck plate, and this is what the, the, the main foundation for your uh, sail rig is. It comes with a sail bag. Yeah, we include everything we think you might need. And here are all the parts. They're all nicely marked. It's not just a bag of parts, but they're all individually marked so you can quickly find what you need. You're not going to be running around looking for parts. We're going to get you on the water and we're going to get you the best parts possible. Um, and here's a set of instructions. They're nicely detailed instructions and it also has a deck layout template that, sh that will guide you where to put everything. And over here, I'm going to show you the very basic tools that you need in this. All right, the next step is to decide where you're going to put the mast. There's a couple things to keep in mind. You want it to be out of the way when you're paddling as much as possible, when it's up, and you want it out of the way when you're paddling, when it's down as much as possible. Now, what I like to do is take a look at the instructions. Over the years, we've helped people rig over 2,000 kayaks and we've seen pretty much everything in the patterns repeat themselves. And we talk about it in here. And if you read these instructions, there's just a couple pages. It talks about the things that you want to consider and maybe some, gives you some recommenda recommendations. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and put the mast and boom together. Right here's the boom. Car the carbon fiber boom. I'm just going to piece it together real quick and put the, put the boom under the mast like this and put the mast together. So this makes it really easy to decide where to put things. I think if I put it right here, it's going to lay out pretty good. It's going to be great in the up position, I can tell you that. I know for a fact, based on experience, that you know that the sail is going to come around like this. This is pretty good. So now I'm going to put it in the down position. And it looks pretty good. And I'm happy. This will strap down using our tie-down kit very nicely, roughly about here. And this is definitely a good spot to put the sail. It's pretty simple. Our, our deck layout template will show you where everything else goes. Everything will follow a pattern. We've decided where we're going to locate the mast. And now we need to install the uh, deck plate and the deck support strut assembly. The deck plate and deck support strut assembly are made up of the deck plate and then the deck adapter block, which is included with your kit. We will. Uh, review your boat and make sure you get the right adapter block for your kayak. Okay, so you have a, the deck plate, the deck adapter block, the under deck adapter block, and then the under deck plate. And these are all bolted together. Your kayak will be deck will be sandwiched between the two adapter blocks. And this makes a very strong and solid assembly. And it's very easy to put together. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next clip. Okay, I've taken the deck plate and the deck adapter block off the deck support strut assembly kit and I'm ready to go ahead and size it up on the deck of the boat. So I'm going to go ahead and just set it on here in this place where we decided to put it. I'm going to center it up, just set it on there. And I'm going to take a look at it from a couple different angles. Might take out a tape measure and get it and work a little bit to get it centered, but I know this is right where it belongs. 
So this is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is pull the deck plate off and I just like to put a little mark in here. And there we go. So I put a mark in there and now it's ready to drill. We've marked the spot. I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole. I like to hold it straight up and down, by the way. And there we go, there's the first hole. I'm gonna take this number 10 screw that comes with the assembly. And it's a tight hole. I drilled a hole that was pretty tight. So it requires a screwdriver to, it, you can't just push it in. So there we go, I have this in place. And the nice thing about this is, this helps me align the exact spot where I'm gonna drill the next hole. Do the same thing I did the last time, but I'm gonna push this out of the way. I know this is squared up, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark my spot. I have the nicely aligned uh, spot where I'm gonna drill the second hole, and here I go, holding the drill straight up and down. I have the under deck adapter block, and by the way, we will include this with a sail rig when you buy it. We will make sure we know what kind of kayak you have and we will give you the right adapter blocks, which makes it a really nice kit. Okay, and here is the deck support assembly and we're, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in now. I wanna show you one other thing. This is a patented assembly. When it's in your boat, you can easily take it out of the way and then you can engage it to solidly support your, the deck of your kayak. But you can fold it up, like I said, and then to make it even better, you can remove it like this. So it's a super convenient um, way to keep your deck solid as a rock, and that's what you need to have a good, solid, or a good sail rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the under deck adapter block in and the, this assembly. Here we go. So we got that on there and have everything in its place. And I'm gonna go ahead and carefully tighten the screws. Okay, I have it threaded in there nicely. And I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, that one's starting to get tight. I'll go back to the other side and tighten it up. And then the other side. And there we go. Here you can see the deck adapter block and how nicely it fits. There's an under deck adapter block as well and it really makes for a nice fit. And remember, when you buy a Falcon Sail rig, Falcon Sails will include an adapter block that will be a really nice fit for your kayak. And uh, in this case, you can see the mast base is attached and this is how everything will look in the end. All right, we have the uh, deck plate installed on here. It's solid as a rock. The next step is to put the standing line anchor point kits or anchor points in place. And if you go to our parts bag, you'll find this standing line and anchor point bag. And inside here are the metal pad eyes that come with the kit that act as the anchor point. The kit inside the instructions is this layout template that really makes it easy to decide where you're going to put the uh, standing line anchor point. So it's perfectly to scale. It will match the deck plate exactly. So you can kind of line it up and make sure it's squared up. And this basically gives you the idea of what direction the standing lines will go. So in this case, um, I am happy with this layout. So I'm gonna take this uh, marker and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little dot here that shows the, the center of the pad eye that I'm gonna put on, okay? And what I like to do next is just measure this from the bow and put it in the same exact location on the other side. Okay. What I like to do, because this template does not extend as wide as the boat, I like to just take a line and just extend the lines on the template to the spot where I'm actually gonna mount the anchor points. The wider it is, the stronger it will be. So I'll go ahead and mark a spot right here. And the other thing to remember is it does not have to be precision accurate. This, this is just a recommended layout. If you're in the general ballpark, it's just fine. We marked where the uh, side stay anchor points are and the back stay anchor points on both sides of the boat. They just have to be symmetrical. Now that I know where they go, I'm gonna go ahead and hold my pad eye so it's centered over the mark 
and quickly drill a hole. It doesn't have to be highly precise or anything like that. If it's close, it's fine. So here we go. There's one hole drilled. We've drilled the hole of one side of the pad eye and I'm gonna take my pad eye and I'm gonna take one of the provided screws that came with the uh, pad eye kit and put it in there. And then that, there's a nice stainless washer, big one to hold things in there solid and, and a uh, stainless lock nut. So once you put them on, they're not coming off. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on there and screw it on. And it's on there, but since it's a lock nut, I can't do it by hand. And I will, you don't have to watch, but I'll go ahead and start screwing this on here. It doesn't take too long. Okay, there we go. It's on there tight. Now, the beauty of this is it tells us exactly where to drill the next hole. Now that we have this bolt or nut or screw in place, and it tells us exactly where to drill the next hole. It's very simple. I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole. And put the next screw in. And tighten it up just like the last one. All right. It's in there. And that's it. Now you can see we put all four pad eyes in. Here's the uh, side stay. Uh, and the back stay and side stay and back stay on each side. So they're both in, they're both ready to go and it's done. The one point I will make, don't over tighten these screws. They don't have to be super tight. Once those uh, lock nuts are fully engaged, you'll feel it. Just stop turning, that's good enough. This is plastic, you can crush the plastic. So just take it easy when you tighten those nuts. Now I'm sitting in my boat because I want to decide what the most convenient place to install the cleats are. The cleats are what you use to adjust and lock in the lines when you're controlling the sails. This is a jam cleat and there's three different uh, control lines. You only need two of them. You need a four stay line to pull up the mast and you need a sheet line to control the boom. And when you get more advanced, you can go ahead and use a boom vang line. In any case, I like to take the four stay line and put it somewhat forward so I have to lean forward just a little bit so it gives me a lot of strength to pull the mast up and lock it into place. So I'll put that forward a little bit, but it's in a convenient place. You don't want to reach too far forward, but I'm just going to go ahead and mark that spot. That will be the four stay cleat location. And for the boom, uh, cleat. Now that's a line you grab more often, so I like to have it back and it, you don't have to apply much force to it. So I'm going to put it right here. I just happen to like it here. It's not a critical decision, but I like to have um, this cleat in a very convenient place. And then I like the four stay cleat, like I said, to be a little bit further forward to give me more force and power and leverage to pull the mast up solidly. And in addition to that, I like to put the uh, boom vane cleat right next to the four stay cleat because when you want to lower the mast, you release them both. As a beginner, you'll only use the four stay cleat, but when you learn more, you might decide you want the boom vane and then you can add that cleat later on. So there you go. That's just a quick decision to make. We have the cleat locations marked and it's very simple. Just like the pad eyes, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole. And there's one hole, and then I'm going to go ahead and drill this other hole here for the sheet line cleat. And that's a good starting point because I'll go ahead and put the nuts in here, and that will help me align the second hole and get them in there real precise. Okay, I have all three cleats placed. You don't have to place all three of them. You can do just two. But in case, all three of them are placed, and each one only has one uh, screw on it so they're not done yet but it's the nice thing is with the one screw in place that tells me exactly where I need to drill the second hole for each cleat so I'm gonna go ahead and drill them now here I go there's, there's one two and three all three holes are perfectly drilled in the perfect spot for uh, getting these in here uh, aligned just how we want them now what we want to do is go ahead and install this pulley on the bow of the kayak. 
we call this a four stay bow block okay so it's basically this really nice solid uh, pulley and there's different ways to attach it to the bow of your kayak there's always an answer um, many kayaks will have some existing hardware you can tie to or if that's not the case there's two options number one we will provide to you a uh, metal pad eye with some rivets that you can attach a pad a metal pad eye to your uh, bow tip or I prefer to drill a hole through the bow tip and tie a line directly to the boat. It's as simple as it can be and solid as a rock and I just like it. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Okay, here we go. I have my 1 8 inch drill bit and I'm going to get it really squared up there and carefully drill through as straight as I can. There we go. Okay, we've drilled the hole. I've threaded the hole, the line through, and it's just barely poking up, and I can take a pair of pliers and pull it through. It just takes a little bit of a yank, and there we go. I will take the uh, pulley, thread it through, and then I'm gonna tie what we call a water knot. It's a very common knot, and it's on the Falcon Sales website at uh, falconsales.com slash knots. It's basically a simple overhand knot like this. The most simple knot there is and then you just follow uh, you know thread the line through the other end through backwards. Okay. When you have a water knot like this or it's good to take a pair of pliers I like to do anyways and just give it a pull on both ends and sometimes it's kind of fun to get a friend on each side and do a little tug of war this knot will never come out. Nope. Rigging a sail just get rid of the excess line in this case we don't have a lighter handy so I'm just going to use a hot knife and just cut off the excess and uh, but you can do this with a lighter and I would do it with a lighter, but I don't have one. So since we're a sail loft, we have a hot knife ready to go. But there you go. So that's a really nice water uh, knot, and it's on there very solidly. At this stage, the thing I want to do is get the deck support strut cut to length. Um, this is what holds the deck up and makes it super solid and gives you really good geometry for a, a super foundation on the deck of your kayak. Um, in this case, I have already pre-marked the spot and I know where I want to cut it. So I just want to let you know that you can easily uh, cut this thing with any kind of uh, saw. In this case, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and use a hacksaw. Let me get on here at this angle. And... Okay. There we go. Any blade you come up with will be fine. I'm going to go ahead and put this rubber uh, engagement piece in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and install this in the boat. But just to, so you know, these carbon fiber struts are very easy to cut. There's nothing special as far as cutting goes. So there we go. The deck support struts in. And now the deck is a lot more solid. And here you can see the deck support strut is engaged, it's in place, it's ready, to, it's doing its job, it's supporting the deck, which is very important um, because a good sail rig generates a lot of downforce. Even conventional sailboats, or pretty much all conventional sailboats have a reinforced deck. It's just important. Now, this patented design is really neat because you can grab the, the strut and it's articulated, you can pull it up into this up position and you can even remove it just that easy you could pack your boat or use this during the installation process it's kind of handy I'll go ahead and put it back in now okay and I'm just doing this with one hand the other hand is holding the camera and now it's back in place this also shows um, it shows our patented deck support strut, of course, and also uh, the hull reinforcement patch. It's a very strong uh, peel and stick um, pressure sensitive patch. It's Kevlar reinforced and it's just an extra level of precaution and it just stiffens things up a bit more. And that comes with the kit as well and that's gone over in the video just a little bit later. 
we have the bow block on, the deck plate with the deck support strut, and cleats. Now it's time to put on the standing lines. This is the mast base here. We've seen this already in the video. I'm going to go ahead and just slide it over the deck plate here and put this set screw on. And this is how the mast connects to the boat. And I'm going to go ahead and get the standing line kit on here. Throw those in there. So here is our patented junction ring. It's really nice because there's no hole to be drilled in the mast. It can come on, it can go off. It's, it's very flexible and it's just a great uh, feature here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clip on the backstays. You can see the back of this, it's flat. So if it folds down on the boat, that this flatness makes it go down even further. And now I have the other backstay. I'll go ahead and put that on. And then I have another side stay here and another side stay and those are on they're not adjusted yet but i'm going to show you how to adjust it in just a second and here is the four stay line and i'm going to temporarily use this to help with adjusting the line so this is a, this line's a little long i'm sure you'll cut off the excess slack but i'll just go ahead and Thread this through over here to this particular cleat. Yeah. Now take the end of this line and tie it directly to the forestay or the junction ring. And now we're going to be ready to adjust these lines to tune the boat and tune these lines to perfection for your, this particular kayak. I have all the lines in their general location where they go and like I said they need to be tuned and what I like to do is not have the sail on and not have anything on these things that confuse the matters and I'll basically adjust them one line at a time. I, what I like to do is remove the side stay lines and adjust the back stay lines independently of the side stay lines. Now this is a little bit tricky and our instructions go into detail about how to do this. And the knots are on falconsales.com slash knots if you happen to screw up the knots, but these knots are very important. But what I'm doing is just kind of using and just changing this little part of the knot. So now you can see this is getting close to being a good location for this. You can see it needs to go a little further. It might be too much, but yeah, it's probably too much, but we'll see. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. And once these things are adjusted, and settled in, they will stay here for the life of your kayak. So this is looking pretty good. I know that as the lines settle into place, they'll stretch or the knots will tighten and then things will, but this is looking pretty good, I'd say, for right now. And it's, you can tell it's really solid. The back stay lines hold the mass from going forward and they're doing a really good job of that at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take these off. And you want to tune these and adjust them here and there as you use your kayak and you see how things fall into place. But a general uh, tuning is just fine for now. So now I'm going to do the side stay lines, independent of the back stay lines, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. I can tell hmm, I need about to take maybe half an inch off of each side. Pull this down. And I'll take about half an inch off of this side. And again, this is covered in the instructions in detail. So when it comes time to tune your lines, you'll you'll get it. You can see I'm getting closer, and I know that I still have a ways to go. These should be tight, like really tight, when you raise the sail. And the, when the side stays are tight, um. 
your rig will be solid as a rock. This is really, the side stays are actually very important. I mean, you can pass on them, but I like to put them on. Actually, the side stays are optional. Now you can see I've pulled this up. It's actually a hair too tight. And I can tell I need to loosen it on this side. There we go. Okay, you can see it kind of springs through that higher position. And I know that one, now that they're, they're uh, engaged, look at how you can see how the boat, this is starting to make the boat and the sail rig become one. And that's the key, one of the keys to having a good solid or a good quality rig. The sail or the mast and the boat should be one. There should be no flopping around. And this is a starting point of how you make it happen, besides having very good hardware. And this is going to take a little bit more adjustment here and there, but right now it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, you play around with it, eventually you get it tuned up so that it's, it's tight like this. Not ridiculously tight, but just enough that you can feel it kick in and centered. And then the side stays are perfect. And then you want the back stays to be adjusted such that they will hold the mast in the fore aft position that you want. Whoops, I crossed them up. That definitely won't work. So you put them in here like this, this one like this. You can see the back stays prevent it from going forward. So the side stays make it solid. The back stays are solid also to keep the mast from going forward and combined. I'm going to go ahead and set this cleat. This is very similar to how your boat will be rigged when you're actually sailing. So pretty much that's how it's done. You'll want to go through and tune them a little bit better and refine it so that it's oriented exactly how you want it. But this is the key to a solid rig right here. We have the standing lines on and pretty much adjusted. The uh, four-stay pulley, the deck plate, the cleats, everything's ready to go. Now it's time to put the sail on the, on the boat. I have a sail right here. I'm going to flip it over. It's a nice, crisp, brand new sail. And I'm going to grab, here's the boom, and here's the upper sections of the mast. I'm going to put it together. They go together very easily. And I'm going to slide it into the mast pocket. Now the top of the mast pocket's reinforced. You can just jam it in there. Don't worry about it. It's okay. And now I have the boom. I'm going to go ahead and release the four stage. Put the mast down as it stands right now. And remove the junction ring. And then I'm going to go ahead and slip the boom on. And I can put the junction ring back on. And it should go up. Okay, good. And now I'm going to go ahead and tie on or put the bottom of the mast on. We have these really nice snaps that make changing out the sail easy to do. I'm just going to snap a couple of them just to hold it temporarily in place. So I'll go ahead and Top the sec top section of the mast onto the mast base. Hold it up temporarily. I'll grab the forestay to hold the mast up. And then I'll grab the outhaul from the sail and run it through the outhaul cleat, put it through the end right there. So there we go. Okay, I have one more step. I have to run the proper line properly. So I'm gonna release this uh, bow line that I tied. and run it down here and these route line routings are all spelled out in the instructions and they're really very simple and it might be hard to follow the first time but when you look at it and do it once it really makes sense it's very easy to do so there we go i tied a bow line and you want to learn how to tie a bow line that's on our website and you can find bow line information anywhere so now the sail is up, about ready to go. All we have left to do is put a pad eye on the deck of the kayak to uh, run the sheet line so that the boom can be controlled and put a hull reinforcement patch in that's very simple and then the sail tie down kit. The next step 
is to install a sheet line pad eye on the deck of the kayak. This is a sheet line, and the sheet line is used to control the boom. So when you let the sheet out, like when the wind's to your back, the, you release the sheet line and the boom will go out. As you're going upwind, you would tend to pull it in and get tighter so you can go upwind better. Okay, so in, the, in any case, when you want to, dis, when you're deciding where to put the sheet line pad eye, ideally it's straight below the boom. It's not a big deal if there's some obstruction like there are in many kayaks. It could be up here, it could be back there, but ideally it's straight below the boom. It just makes it a little easier to pull. So this is a very simple task. I have the pad eye here. I can see it's in this, the spot. I'm just gonna go ahead and drill one of the holes. That hole's drilled. Now that this hole's drilled, I'll go ahead and put a, uh, a, a bolt or, or screw in that hole, and that will help me perfectly align the next hole. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Well, we've put in the one hole, uh, which perfectly aligned us to help us drill the second hole. I'm gonna drill straight in. There we go. We put the uh, sheet fair lead on the deck of the kayak. That's done. I ran the sheet line from the, it's tied to the boom to start with and ran it through the fair lead and into the cleat. So this is the routing for the sheet line. Let's go ahead and lower the sail and decide exactly where we want the sail tie down kit. And we'll release the force day. The sail drops easily like it always does. And we're going to decide do we want it you know, here or there or wherever, but basically you want to fold it up. Now, properly folding a sail is a good idea, it's not critical, but if you fold it properly, like this we have uh, two creases or flakes plus the boom down here, you can go ahead and fold it up like this. We have another video on properly folding the sail. It's not really a hard thing to do, but it kind of drives me crazy when people don't fold their sail properly. But in this case, we can decide where we want the sail to lay in the down position. Personally, I like it something like this. It depends on your kayak, it depends on you, it depends on a lot of things, but I like it personally here. I could probably put the shot cord so it's tied here and then the hooks down here, and that would allow me to, you know, move the sail. I could actually have some flexibility in where the sail is exactly and precisely, because some people wouldn't want it on their skirt. It's really not an issue, but if you don't like it there, you want it off your skirt, you can, if you put the shot cord on here correctly, it will, you can move it and have it in two spots. I like it here because these cleats just kind of you know, is a stop for it, it's perfect. So I would put one of the um, pad eyes here, the shock cord would come over here, and then I would put the uh, um, lashing hook here, and you'll see how it will work really nice. The other thing I'll mention to you is the boom is, the boom stops right here. You wanna make sure you get the boom into that. And I might put another one right here but let's just go ahead and put one in and see how it goes it's perfect i'll go ahead and rig that up and then we'll show you how it works it's just like attaching this pad eye in the lashing hook is just as easy as putting a bolt in we have the pad eye back here the shock cord and the lashing hook it's holding the sail on perfectly um in this and it's nice because it gives you some options. You can actually move this around if you want, if you decide you need to move it for any reason. So this is nice. It gets kind of hung up on the cleats. It's not anything that you have to do. It's just a nice trick I've learned to do. Some kayaks already have lashing hooks on them. Let's, let me show you on this boat. Here's another Jackson kayak, a Cuda HD, a great kayak that has these. And you can see there's a lashing hook right there and there's one here and there's another one here and they all are ready to go so your kayak and many kayaks may already have lashing hooks and shock cords ready to go so you can decide where to put these things exactly and exactly how you like them there's no right way there's no precise exact place to put them you just want to have it so your uh, sail rig is secure when it's down the falcon sail rigging kit comes with two lashing kits so 
you can have two of them so you have a backup or if you just like it configured a little differently there's options the kayak sail rig comes with a hull reinforcement patch this is some really tough material and it's got some uh, uh, adhesive backing on it so you peel this off and you stick this in the hull under the deck support strut and that just makes things more solid and uh, reduces the chances of there ever being a problem. We've rigged many, many kayaks without these before we even decided to include a hull reinforcement patch. There's never been an issue whatsoever, but we like to err on the side of caution and make things more solid and more durable and more ready for whatever you might come up with. So we have the hull reinforcement patch. It's a self-adhesive uh, sticker of this uh, uh, Kevlar reinforced plastic material and you just stick this on the hull right underneath the deck support oh, strut. Boat's all rigged. It's done. Uh, there's a couple things that we didn't record and I'm going to let you know about. Number one, one minor thing, I put the uh, independent fair lead on this cleat. It's right here. It's just like putting a fair lead on for this sheet line. The sail kit comes with extra fair leads so if you have any need for them, you'll have them. I also put the boom bang on. This is more of an advanced line. If you don't know what a boom bang is or you don't miss a boom bang, leave it off. It's not a big deal. All it does is hold the, sit, the boom from raising at the winds to your back. And that's all it does. I mean, it's a nice feature. It preserves your power. You, you don't dump air. You don't lose square footage for that. Um, when you're done, get rid of your excess lines. Uh, I cut all the lines, that, like this boom bang line, for example. There's only this much left. That's all you need. You figure out how much you need. Let's see here. I'm going to re release these lines. You can see. Well, let's, oh, I didn't release it. I can see that's all the line I need in there. The, the four-stay line, I can put the boom down, or the mass down, and... I don't need any more than this. Leave yourself maybe six inches extra of the sheet line. There's only a little bit extra there. Don't leave a bunch of extra line. It's just sloppy sailing. You want to become a sailor. You want to get to be a good sailor. And that means don't have unnecessary lines. Get rid of them. And when you cut them, melt the ends with a lighter. And the standing lines here, look, I have one inch left. That's all you need. You're not going to ever need any more. And if you do, call Falcon Sales. We will take care of you. Don't you worry. We'll, if you've got a problem, we're going to make sure you have a great experience. You'll be fine. Cut the lines. Get rid of them. When you get to this point, you're going to have a solid rig, a solid sail, and the, um, your sail and the boat will be one. It won't be a floppy rig. You won't have a bendy mass. You won't have, it's just going to be solid as a rock, and when the wind hits it, you're gonna go and you're gonna have a great time. You need to, so when you get to this point, when you need help with sailing, take a look at the Falcon Sail Help videos on kayak sailing and we'll show you. It's very simple, it's very easy to get started. Even a beginner can figure out the basics of sailing. You don't have to be an expert, it's a really good time. Now that we've shown you how to install a great sail rig on your kayak, I'm going to show you a little bit about kayak sailing. Here I'm sailing the same kayak you saw in the rigging video, but with a 1.4 square meter sail. This sail rig is compatible with both the 1.4 and 1.0 square meter sails. Now you can see here I'm working my way around in a circle and sailing all points of sail. And you'll notice that the sail is full of air on most of the circle which means you get propulsion and useful propulsion on most points of sail uh, probably about well over two-thirds of any of the lines you could take okay i'm tacking now you'll see me coming around and now the sail is full of air and i've got some good propulsion again and you'll see my friend up there with his uh, uh kayak and a one square meter falcon sail I'm going to catch up to them and we're going to come up to in the next clip a little bit more wind and I think you're going to think it's pretty neat. One of the nice things about Falcon sails besides being so easy to lower and uh, still on the deck of your kayak and be upwind 
capabilities is the fact that they're going to handle all the wind that you can handle. In this case, I have a 1.4 square meter sail. I probably should add the one square meter sail on. Uh, this boat's being pushed as fast as it will go. Uh, you know, once you hit maximum hull speed, that's it. And even the one square meter sail could push me that fast. But in any case, here is the one square meter or 1.4 square meter sail. Now you can go to our website, design your own sail, tell us, and after you order, tell us what kind of boat you have in the ordering process, and we will make a sail rig for you with all the adapters and hardware that you need to rig one for your boat.